Hey, what's up everyone? Johnny the Geek here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to capture footage from this Canon tape camera. HD tape. Yes, that's right. They make tapes, and it's an HD. Um, to Final Cut through uh, Log and Capture, right? But uh, first, before we begin, we want to make sure, and I'm going to shoot some test footage with this thing right now. We want to make sure that our camera is set properly to even shoot in HD. Right, so we want to make sure that uh, nobody has set this camera to standard def, and then you go ahead and record all of your material in standard def, and then there's nothing you can do about it. Um, so, first things first, we're going to turn on the camera and go into manual mode. There's a lot of other modes here, but we want to go into the uh, M or manual mode. Right, so uh, looking at our screen here to access the menu you gotta press this menu button right down here right press that and to navigate the menu bu menu button you uh, go up and down with this little wheel here and then press in to select right so first things first we're going to go into the signal setup and uh, it's very important that this says HD and by default HD will be the uh, 16 by 9 um, they also have standard definition 16 by 9 and standard definition 4 by 3. We do not want that. Those are not the settings we want. So make sure it says HD. So press in to select. And then frame rate. This is uh, your personal preference. What you want to shoot in. Typically I like to shoot in 30 frames for things like interview that goes up onto YouTube and whatnot. Um, if I'm shooting a short film or a movie, then uh, 24 frames is cool. Right, if you want some documentary style type footage or whatever, um, but uh, uh, I usually like to stick with 30 frames. And uh, you can actually kind of trick it later on in post uh, to get footage to look like 24. Um, but you really can't get anything if you shot in 24. You'll never be able to get it to look like 30 or 60. So I'll shoot with uh, 30 frames. So I'll choose that, and then. Uh, under camera setup, this is just personal preference. If you're on a tripod, then uh, you can turn off in image stabilization. If you're handheld, then turn on image st stabilization. And that's pretty much it. Um, there's nothing else you need to change or set. Um, one thing though, if you have a XLR uh, plugged in, which this does support XLRs right there, right there right two XLR inputs you do have to turn on XLR inputs so uh, by default this camera has uh, microphones at the at the very front of it which aren't that great but they work if you want to get fancy and use uh, manual input XLRs you'd have to choose that and then uh, you can also control the uh, audio that goes into that XLR if you want the audio levels to be automatic um, or manual so if you want manual you switch it here and then you would just fiddle around with this right the levels manually right so a little bit about that and that's pretty much it you can leave everything else alone click close and now we're ready to record um, in terms of uh, shutter speed and f-stop that's something that you just gotta learn on your own uh, depending on what you're shooting I'm just gonna go ahead and shoot you know some random stuff right now so I'll just go ahead and press record and uh, now it's recording and I'll just record about like 10 seconds worth of footage right go ahead and press stop now I'm going to plug the camera in using this firewire cable this is a firewire little mini connection here into the camera Right, and then I'm going to plug this. This my particular laptop just happens to have uh, FireWire 800 only. And make sure you use quality cables, otherwise uh, you'll get an error when you're trying to connect and initialize the uh, camera with Final Cut. Right, so everything's plugged in, and it's actually good to uh, turn off, turn back on. But I'm actually going to first switch it to VCR. I want to rewind. 
right? So up at the top here, up at the top here, we have the rewind, play, fast forward. So I went ahead and rewind, rewound everything. Now I'm going to turn it off and then turn it back on. So it's, everything cycles through, makes a connection uh, to the laptop. Now we're going to go into a final cut. Alright, so now that we got everything plugged in, everything's turned on, the camera's set to uh, VCR play, we're going to go ahead and fire up Final Cut. Once this starts up, you're going to want to go to Audio Video Settings. And uh, I've already set it, but it could be you know set to something else right now. And uh, the sequence preset's not really uh, that important to change. But um, you want to kind of choose something that's uh, closely related to what you shot in. So, like I said earlier, we shot in 1440 by 1080, and um, or this particular camera shoots in 1440 by 1080. And I'm choosing the LT codec, the Apple ProRes 422, because it's a smaller file size, and I didn't really shoot anything super super high quality, and I shot in 30 frames. So I'll choose that. Now the important part is the capture preset and that's set to HDV Apple ProRes 422. That is very important right there for editing in Final Cut. So under sequence preset it's pretty much the same as what we chose in the uh, summary. Same as the uh, capture preset. And that's pretty much it. Uh, none of these you have to really choose. Just make sure that it says FireWire and TSC. You don't have to really do anything with this. All the default settings is fine. So click on OK. And now we're ready to do a log and capture. So click on that. And uh, if you get an error saying that uh, it was failed to initialize the deck, then uh, there's a problem with your connection. So try using a different uh, FireWire cable. So I'm going to name this how to capture obviously you would choose another name that pertains to your video footage and then you're going to click on capture and it's going to queue up the tape here it's going to play back and then once it plays back it starts recording and uh, when you you can either let it run or you can just press escape alright so here's our footage and if you scroll over to the side here you'll see that uh, both frame size, video rate the uh, compression scheme um, the data rate all of this is uh, relatively the same which is good <clears throat> but not that important so when you bring it down to the timeline here, it's going to ask you if you want to change the sequence settings to match the clip settings, even though they're already already closely related. We'll just go ahead and say yes. All right. So here's our footage, and um, I'm not going to edit any of this really. So I'll just leave that at that. I'm just going to pretend I've edited everything, and now I'm going to go ahead and export. And the best uh, export settings that you want to choose, um, especially for something like YouTube, I'm going to go through it real quick. You go uh, to export here using QuickTime conversion, click on that, then you go to options, and then uh, under size here, for some reason um, Final Cut read the files and it wants to do it as a 410 by 225 we do not want that. Even if it said 1440 by 1080 you still don't want that. You kind of want to choose. You do not want compressor native. You kind of want to choose um, one of these two resolutions here. Either 1280 by 720 or 1920 by 1080. If your video is just something quick and easy or not that great or high production value then just go ahead and do 1280 by 720. The file size is smaller. It's easier to upload and um, um, not everybody has full 1080p monitors. If you have like really high quality video, then yeah, go ahead with 1920 by 1080. And um, don't choose any of this, even though this resolution right here seems like it's exactly what you shot in. Just stick with these top, these these two resolutions right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do 1920 by 1080. 
<clears throat> press OK. And uh, if you're going to be uploading to YouTube, straight to YouTube with this video, then uh, click on uh, Prepare for Internet Streaming and Fast Start. <clears throat> and the sound quality, you could just leave, leave it alone. Click on OK. And we'll name it something. Right, and I'm going to save it to my desktop, so I'm going to click on Save. Now it's going to render out. It's going to take, depending on how long your video is and how fast your computer, your processor is, will determine how long this is going to take. Um, this is a very short video, so it should only take about, well, less than a minute here. But I don't always trust this. It could say, like, two hours and then be done in about a minute. All right, so now that we're done... I'm going to go ahead and hide this. Here's our video. And I did a Apple Eye to bring up this information here. And here is the video information. It's an H.264 codec, 1920 by 1080. Uh, pay no attention to its current size. Its current size is 1280 by 720 only because my monitor that I'm on right now is not. 1080p monitor. That's the highest resolution that my monitor can do, so that's why um, it says that there. So I'll go ahead and full screen this, play it back. Right, and there's my video. Right, and let's say, for example, if I were to export this again using QuickTime conversion and I went to options and under size it was I left it at compressor native or chose one of these other ones but I'll just leave it at compressor native and did OK I'll just call it sequence one I'll show you what it looks like when you play it back alright so here's that uh, compressor native format that we did if you notice there look at that see it's all stretched out it's not widescreen and it's some funky resolution that they did here so that's why I don't ever go with that that setting that compressor native and when you upload it to YouTube that's when you're gonna have the same looking video but then black bars on the side of it and that's why you have that is because you export or capture improperly so hopefully that helps you all out. Thanks for watching. Uh, please comment, subscribe, thumbs up, thumbs down the video. Thanks for watching. John of the Geek out. Peace.